Well, it's time. It's time to change some minds. Can some tails and make some steers out of bulls. Here we go. He's over there calling him in. I'm gonna get some stuff prepped and head over. himself as he can and then I'll go in and help sort the stragglers. They do pretty good coming out on their own. So our version of a swing shoot. Oh these things are hard. Look out girls. One thing I do know is that I'm out of shape. I just had to move that trough from in there. And it about whooped my tail. So I just put too many in here. They slipped past me. I was shooting for seven or eight and I got 10. So we gotta let a few go through the shoot. So I can leave these on. So I also know that different people do different things. On our farm, we have found that it works best for us to cut our calves for castration instead of banding. They just do better. My husband's done both, but as long as I've been here, we've cut them and they do really well. Um, they, they rebound quickly and really don't seem to go off the feed. So that's how we do it here. Lunch. Hey, did y'all wash your hands? No. <laughs> Me neither. You reckon we'll be all right? I haven't died yet. No, we haven't died yet. You're doing good. So far, so good, right? Uh-huh. Now the fun part. <laughs> oh, little fatties. Steak or hamburger or something. <laughs> yeah. hmm. It'll be a little bit of all that eventually. Mm -hmm. hmm, they got quiet for a second. Mm -hmm. And last one. It's just turned over. I still have hair. We use them all the sand for disinfectant. Works like a charm. Mm. That's hot water. Clean hands, clean knife, sharp knife, iodine. Here we go. Cut the bottom of the third of the scrotum off. When the testicles drop down, I take my knife and split the membrane. And I, it'll be attached down to the bottom. You break the membrane off and milk, you push it back up. Wrap your finger around this right here, because this is a big blood vessel. This is where it's going to bleed if you break it right there. And then pull the cord out. See here, so get the cord pulled off longer. But that, he don't bleed like that. That membrane that went back up helps him to stop not to bleed. We've worked a third of them and um, at least, no, 
two thirds of what we've worked so far have been bulls or more, <sighs> which is good, but not good if you're the one having a can tails. <laughs> hey, Baldy. He's kind of like a puppy dog. He's really sweet. All right, who wants to go next? You do? Good. Let's do this. You a boy? Yeah, of course you are. Everybody's a boy. Last one. And it's a bull, of course. Might as well be, right? Here's our notes. Twenty four bulls. Twenty four bulls. Eleven heifers. It's the year of the bull, evidently. All in all, that went very well. I seriously was apprehensive about it, y'all. I really was. I just had to get my mind right. Cowgirl up. I only got stepped on once. Right foot. I'm somewhat scared to look because it feels like maybe some skin is missing, but we'll see. Maybe not. And also, it would be like amazing if I could figure out how to open this gate. I hate these things right here. Okay. Turn them back out with their mamas. And let them get a little, get a little ninny. Especially the boys whose feelings are hurt right now. <laughs> they really did great though. Not much blood at all. Um, my girl noted that. She's like, they're not bleeding. That's right. You do it right, they don't. See your mommies. Go find your mommies. <laughs> okay, y'all. We're going to be doing something a little different for this farm wife anyway. In all the years that I've been helping can tails and change minds, I've never tried cooking any calf fries, aka Rocky Mountain oysters, aka fried calf testicles. But tonight, that's about to change. So, here we go. If this isn't for you, then don't watch. It's my channel and I'll do what I want to. Okay, anyway. Mmm. I think you just have to get kind of past the, past the idea of what you're eating. If this isn't really your thing. I mean, I, it's not really my thing either, but... By golly, if I've cooked squirrel... And I've eaten groundhog and all these other things. We're going to do this. I hear they're really good. And the cast iron makes everything better. So, um, <clears throat> that sounded good, didn't it? I've done a little research. A little bit, anyway. Not a lot. I'm kind of winging this, but that's also what I like to do. So, I'm going to set these in some water. Clean them really good, soak them for a little while, and then I'm going to cut them up and fry them. Here we go. I think they're washed pretty good. Now, oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna put some water in here and let them soak. And then I'll be back. So I saw several places on the interwebs that um, if you partially, some people said freeze or partially freeze these bad boys, that they will cut easier. So I have time. I mean, whatever. I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna put them on this little sheet and let them partially freeze and see if that makes it 
easier. Easy is good in my book or easier. And I will be cutting off these long pieces. It looks like a hurricane has come through and hit my house. Um, but at this point, I just really don't care. <laughs> There's too much other stuff to get done. Right, Bonnie? Hey. Okay, so here we go. I, um, I cut this butterfly in a little bit and realized that I probably do need to pull this membrane off even more, which is, looks like it's going to be a lot of work. I don't know if I'm going to do this or not. Maybe they need to freeze a little bit more because it's not peeling off as good. Like, I feel like I'm losing a lot of meat here. Oh. Okay, I'm making an executive decision to just cook it with that little layer of membrane on it. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to cut them like this. Little nuggets. Little calf fries. Little calf fry nuggets. That's what we're doing. Once you kind of get past the idea of what you're actually cutting up, it's, it's really not a big deal. Honestly, you know what this looks like? It looks like a banana. I'm looking in the wrong place. It looks like a banana. We're just going to fry some bananas. Okay, all cut up and cleaned again. I, uh, I rinsed them again. And we definitely have more here than I think we're going to be able to eat. I'm seriously <laughs> considering freezing these. I don't know. We'll see. I guess we can see how these turn out. If they're worth freezing, then I'll freeze them and we can have them another night. Yeah. And I'm going to coat these with some buttermilk because I think buttermilk is amazing. That might have been a little too much. Probably. Whatever. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to put the breader in a bag and I'm going to put them in there and shake them up just like I would if it was, um, if it was like little steak nuggets that I do with country fried steak. That's what we're doing. That's what we're going to try. And I'm going to get the grease going and we're going to fry these bad boys up. So I just put my breader in a Ziploc bag and I put some of the pieces in here and I just shake it up and then I'll take them out and put them on a plate and do several so they'll be ready to go when the grease gets hot. I'm using canola oil. I love canola oil. I have several friends up in Canada that are canola farmers. I like supporting them and I think it's a good oil. So you could also use, I believe I read online when I was doing a little research, you could use a cup of flour and a cup of um, cornmeal or you know, one part to one part cornmeal and flour. I just like using this chicken breader because it's already got the seasonings and stuff in there and I know it makes things taste amazing. So that's what we're doing. Shake it up and roll. Shake and roll. Shake, rattle and roll. I don't know. Maybe not the rattle part, but shake and roll. Okay? Okay, we have a plate full of calf fries, that's what I'm going to call them. Calf fries ready to fry. And is in my cast iron pot. I don't know what else it's called. It's a cast iron pot with a little basket, a little fry pot, a little, little fry daddy, cast iron style. And I, um, I think you're supposed to get the temperature to like 350. I don't know. I don't ever test that. I just get it hot and fry stuff. And then I have the oven heating up to 200. When I'm frying things, I like to put them, once they get done, in a 200 degree oven to keep them from getting soggy. 
So that's what I'm doing. And we have lift off. <laughs> I'm so excited to try these. And honestly, my kids are excited to try them too. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but they are. Can't wait to see what they think. Okay. I'm turn that sucker off. Here we go. A batch of cat fries. I'm ready to try them. They look good. We'll see. Okay. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, I'm gonna try it too. That's good, y'all. I'm not just saying that because I made them, but they're good. It smells good. Try one. Get one of these small ones. Um, I can't even tell you what it tastes like. It almost kind of sort of tastes like an oyster. Is yeah. it too hot? This one is. Get another one. <laughs> it's really good. That I'm so good. excited. He said, what happens if you bite down on it? <laughs> it's good, isn't it? It tastes like a turkey nugget. It tastes kind of like a turkey nugget. No, it tastes like, not kind of, like. It tastes like a turkey nugget. Okay. You try one, awesome. Okay. Let's get one of those. They, yeah, they're cooler. Those are cooler. Come on. Good. Got good flavor, doesn't it? I'm eating from a bowl of pickles. <laughs> she's having a hard time because she's thinking well, about think what about it was. It. <laughs> I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> okay, the verdict is that they are very good. Seriously, better than I thought they would be. Yay for calf fries! They're calf fries. Calf nuggets. Nuggets. Or nuggets. Oh. Oh.